Hey folks, Brendan here from the Blue Light Group with some updates for you about the police recruitment process. If you're watching this live, you know which date it is. If you're watching this on the replay, it's April 2023. I think the 4th or the 5th, something like that. Anyway, Uplift has finished. So that's what this video is all about. That's what this live is all about. The 20,000 Uplift has finished. Now what? What does that mean for police recruitment? So if you're watching this on the replay and you don't know who I am, I'm Brendan O'Brien. I'm the person who actually founded Blue Light Consultancy. We specialise in supporting people to achieve their dreams, get into the police. First time, every time. We're not just after a pass. We are after awesome, awesome marks. Uh, check the Trustpilot reviews below. Don't just take my word for it. I am awesome at doing what I do. I am awesome at helping you to succeed in achieving your dreams. But there's going to be all sorts of outside factors that are going to get in the way now. The good news is it's still going to be possible to join the police. It's just going to be a little bit tougher. So what does April 2023 mean for us? Well, the uplift has finished. So the government's aim to recruit an additional 20,000 officers. I know we can play around with that word additional. They're not actually additional, are they? They're just replacing the ones that were cut back over a decade. But still, they've been very welcome for the service. I know my colleagues who still work in the service very much appreciate the increase in numbers, although it's not without its um, logistical problems, it's not without the training problems, the development problems, it's not without the problem of having loads of people out there on response who've got less than two years service but anyway those are all things that the service will and will and i know they'll be able to overcome those issues so what am i seeing now we've hit april 2023 if you weren't in the police by the end of march then the government doesn't get its funding for you uh, so the recruitment has taken a bit of a slowdown. And the first thing to say is that actually what I've seen is a slowdown in comms. So there's within the Blue Light Facebook group, and you're watching this, if you're watching this live, you're watching it in the Facebook group. If you're not part of that group, 21,000 plus individuals, all like-minded, either in the police or working towards getting in the police, check the links below for how to join us. But within that group, there's a chat for just about every force. And I monitor those on an almost daily basis. I know, it takes me ages. Um, but what I'm seeing is lots of people commenting on how I've not heard anything for months now. I emailed twice, I've still not heard anything back. I've tried to call, not got a response. So we're starting to see a slowdown in comms, which is what normally happens when there's a slowdown in recruitment. So another thing I've started to see is a vagueness around probable start dates. So we'll probably have an intake in September. We might have an intake in September. We might have an intake in autumn 2023. We're starting to see that kind of vagueness, um, which is troubling because that kind of uncertainty is reflected on the uncertainty around numbers. So they're not quite sure what numbers are gonna need. They're not quite sure what numbers are gonna be able to afford. I've seen this play out in austerity 12 years ago, and the big problem is that forces find it very, very difficult to be able to predict how many officers are going to be able to, well, they know how many they need, but whether they can afford them is something else. Um, watch out in the future for intakes being canceled. I've seen that play out before. I am sad to say that I think it's probably gonna happen again. So we're gonna be try and hedge our bets if we can. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Uh, some forces have already indicated they're not going to be recruiting until 2024. They've already got enough people in the pipeline from the uh, uplift recruitment process. They've already got enough. So they don't need to even open up the recruitment window for another year. Wow, <laughs> that's ages away. Um, and some forces, um, not many, have indicated to people that, that their start date when they do find a firm start date, it's not going to be until 2024. So these are people who have already been in the recruitment process for a year or more, who are going to find themselves looking forward to a, a maybe start date of 2024. Which I know is not good enough, but I've seen this play out before. I've seen, you know, one of my clients 
One of my clients applied for a certain force, I'm not going to name and shame, I might do if they start doing this again, but they applied and they were in a talent pool for two and a half years. They got back in touch with me to say it's taken me two and a half years from application form to walking through the door on my first day. I could have got a degree in that time, never mind doing a degree once I'm in the police, I could have got a degree in that time. Two and a half years, it's completely unacceptable. But we are going to see this happen now. We're going to see more use of it. I've already seen an email from one force that's indicated that we're taking the top 150 scoring candidates out of their merit pool. So they're calling it a merit pool. Sometimes it gets called a talent pool. Uh, so talent pool or merit pool doesn't really matter. This is the pool of candidates that you're in. Uh, there may be several hundred of you in there. And they've already indicated that the next, the top scoring 150 in the merit pool will be going through to the next stage, which is final interview. With a view to, I think they're talking about 70 or 80 places over the next several months to a year. So look at what the odds are getting like. Um, so we're going to see the increased use, I think, of talent pools and merit pools. You do not want to be in one of those. You want to be out of there as soon as you can. Uh, what else are we going to start seeing? Interviews, I've already heard from my contacts within the sector that the College of Policing have made it mandatory now that forces must start introducing final interviews. Could have done that during uplift, couldn't they? <laughs> they didn't want to, though. The reason why they didn't want to is some forces were quite happy not to have any kind of face-to-face -face contact because they knew they had to hit certain targets and they knew that if they had a final interview, they would be failing a considerable amount of their candidates and so for that reason, they decided not to do a final interview. I know that because a chief constable I know, used to work with them, actually said to me on Twitter, we've taken a risk-based approach to this. We know there's a risk, but we do need to hit the target. So there you go. <laughs> That's how targets influence and impact on police forces. Um, so the numbers. Um, during, uplift, during uplift, forces were recruiting about 15 to 17 or even 18,000 a year. Um, I know from a Freedom of Information Act um, request that have been made to forces from uh, a colleague of mine that uh, what that results in is about one in eight candidates succeeding, about one in eight. It, it varies from force to force, but generally across the country, about one in eight are succeeding in the recruitment process over the uplift period. Um, that number is not sustainable because the funding doesn't exist anymore. So what we're going to see is we're going to see that reduced now to around, now I estimate around 7,000 a year, maybe less than that, 6,000 a year. Um, normally it's around seven or 8,000, but I think we're going to see less than that now because forces have had a massive recruiting drive and they've now got no money. <laughs> You know, they've not had a massive increase in their funding. Actually, most forces haven't had an increase at all. But because of inflation, what that means is it's actually a budget cut. Uh, and depending on what the police settlement is in terms of pay, uh, will also determine the extent to which they can, re can recruit. So if they manage to, the Police Federation manages to get a good pay rise for the police, that means less police officers are going to be able to be recruited because the 90% of every budget, of all the budgets in the police, is on salary and pensions. So um, increase in salary means decrease in the amount of money available, which means decrease in the number of candidates that are going to be recruited. So I think, I'm, 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 I'm trying not to be too pessimistic, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say around six to 7,000 a year. My estimate there, depending on which force it is, it's gonna be something like one in 15, one in 20 are gonna succeed. 1 in 15, 1 in 20, something around there. So we're going from 1 in 8 to around 1 in 15, 1 in 20, is my prediction. Uh, that's if the numbers of people applying stays constant, um, which it kind of does, really. It kind of does, because there's only a certain number of people every year want to actually join the police. So same number of people applying, less vacancies. All right, so that sounds like bad news, doesn't it? Well, the good news is, Forces are going to still keep recruiting. All my contacts within the police sector tell me that they're not going to just turn the tap off like they did in the first round of austerity, because that was just too painful. When they turned the tap back on, they found that actually the recruiting teams all moved on. The trainers have all moved on. The tutor constables have all moved on. It, it, it's too difficult. 
So they're not going to do that again. They're not going to make that mistake again. They're going to keep recruiting just in smaller, smaller numbers. So what can we do to make sure that we are that one in 20? I don't like odds like that. I like certainty. You know, I was talk talking to one of my clients earlier on a one-to-one -one how we, we don't do luck because they said something like, hopefully I'll be successful. We don't do hopefully. We don't do hopefully. We do certainty. We don't do luck as well because I have people sometimes saying, wish me luck. I'm not going to wish you luck at all. I don't wish any of my clients luck. It's not that I don't want them to succeed, but if you're relying on luck, it means you've not prepared and practiced enough. Seriously, you've not prepared and practiced enough. That's what you need to do. You need to prepare, you need to practice. So without that preparation, without that practice, you've got every chance of failing. You know, don't think that it's just an open door that anyone can apply and anyone's going to get in. It might have been a little bit like that with some forces during our during the uplift, but that's gone. That's finished now. So my advice is um, you're not just aiming for a pass. You're aiming for an awesome, awesome high school. If you can, have several applications in with several forces and hedge your bets. You know, the individual who's got the capability to choose from a range of options is capable of making the best decisions. So... Um, and what might happen is the force that you thought were going to recruit suddenly drop you because that's happened and it's going to happen again. So at least you've got a plan B, a plan C. So always have something in your back pocket that you can fall back on if you can. Whether it's applying to British Transport Police, um, whether it's applying to several Home Office forces, whether it's applying for PCSO at the same time. Just hedge your bets. And start also thinking about organisations like National Crime Agency, um, MI6, um, I know, it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Um, but all of those other law enforcement agencies do recruit. And I think the National Crime Agency has got some awesome opportunities. MI6, I have no idea what opportunities they've got, but I'm guessing they're probably pretty awesome. So there's always these alternatives. And so I'd make sure that I'm spreading the risk out. Uh, because you do not want to be sitting in the merit pool for two years only to find that actually the wave goodbye at you and say, sorry, we've not got any places at all and your online assessment centres run out and your fitness has run out and your vetting has run out and all of these things have run out. You're going to have to start all over again. Oh, by the way, we're not recruiting. You just do not want that because so many of my clients over the years have gone through that. Honestly, the pain they've gone through. I do not want that for you. So there you go, folks. It's not austerity again but it's going to be tougher to get in and I'd really like to help if you're still watching this now it means that you're serious about getting into the police and I'd really like to help support you on that journey if you check the links below you'll see the links to my courses you'll see the links to my websites you'll see the links to the trust pilot reviews you'll see what other people say about my services we are five star I work really hard to ensure that you succeed my question to you, though, is uh, I'm all in on this journey for you, with you. Are you all in? You've got to do the hard work. I'll show you the way, but you've got to do the hard work. There's no magic bullet. There is no magic bullet. You've got to do the hard work. But the prize at the end of it, that warrant card in your pocket, oh, my goodness, it's so worth it. At 28 years of service and three different forces. What an awesome career. I loved every moment of it. I'm so proud to have served as a police officer. I want to help you get that same proud. So come and join me on the webinars. Come and join me on the one-to-ones. Uh, come and join me on the online courses. Check the links below. And the thing is, if within 24 hours you think this isn't for me, just let me know. I'll give you a full refund. And if you do all the work I've asked you to do and you fail, I'll give you a refund. I mean, how fair is that? It's a no-brainer, really, because I've only given two over the past year, two refunds over the past year. One of those individuals we parted as friends just said, it's not for me being a police officer. Great, I'm not sure I'd part as friends. Uh, the other one actually came back, bought the course again and succeeded. So there you go. That's what the success rate is like. Come and join us, folks. And if, you, if you've not subscribed already, please do subscribe to this channel so you'll get more of my videos. I'm dropping in a video like this every other day onto YouTube. Fantastic that you've watched this all the way to the end. I hope it's provided value for you. And I'll catch up with you at the next one. Bye-bye for now.